So looking for a new topic of video to work on, I started looking at that computer, realized I don't have the tools for it, and it's probably more complicated than most people want. But then I looked at that one and realized it's just some scrap wood and some basic hand tools. Could be useful since everybody's on a big building surge right now. So why not? Ow! I'm studying! I promise! So as a quick explanation of what this is, it's mostly just spare parts I had laying around. Decided to make a computer out of it since I had enough pieces to work on it. All it really is is just a cooler, a power supply, and a video card, all strapped onto a piece of board. Well, kind of. And a motherboard in the back. And then it uses this PCI Express cable to actually reach the video card. Pretty simple overall. It's water cooled because why not? It keeps it small and looks a little more balanced in the front. It's just a cheap water cooler from Corsair. Nothing, or Cooler Master, sorry. And nothing really special about it. So, you kind of see there's hardly anything really holding it together. And it's just a piece of plywood that's been glued together into a basic framework. So over the video, it's just going to be how this thing actually is constructed and a bunch of videos will be popping up over here, which kind of explains what the pieces are and where the holes are cut in order to make this something a little more functional. The first thing you're probably going to notice is that there's no grills on the fans. So if you have small kids, don't make this. It's just not a good idea. They're going to stick their fingers in it and they're going to get hurt and then there's going to be some problems and you're going to wish you didn't build the case in the first place. But if you have teenagers, for example, they have a little more impulse control, and if they actually do stick their fingers in it, it's probably not going to do anything really that harmful, maybe some small cuts or something. So keep that in mind when you look at this particular case. So while this footage is running in the corner, you'll probably notice on the back side that there's a big empty area. If you want to, you could just take a little bit of Velcro, slap it on the back of an SSD, slap it on the back of the board, and now you have hard drives. You could do this with old style hard drives, they're a little heavy, but with the, with the heavy duty Velcro, you probably have no problem whatsoever. Just like this video card, for example, it's just hanging there by Velcro. Now the thing with this is that the back plate of a video card gets warm. So you might want to give it a little airspace. What I did, I had a little bit of scrap aluminum laying around, it's about an eighth of an inch thick, and I hooked that right to the actual board and then I put the velcro onto the aluminum panel and stuck a little bit into the back of the video card with some velcro and I get a little bit of a gap between the actual video card and the board itself and then I have no real problems with heat dissipation anymore. You're probably thinking at this point doesn't a normal case have standoffs between the actual tray and the motherboard to hold it on there? Velcro doesn't really make sense for that does it? Because it needs some airflow. Well you're right I did not use velcro. So what I did is I went to the hardware store, bought some of these little blind nuts like that, drilled a corresponding hole inside the wood, stuck the blind nut in there, and now I have a place to mount bolts. So on my case, I don't have extra standoffs. So what I did is I bought some actual like bolts that hold right into that blind nut. Got a little nylon separator, about a half inch or so. And then I used the motherboard tray like that. I get a little bit of half inch gap on the back, plenty of room for airflow, and this is what it looks like when I take that motherboard tray off. So I have the bolts, you can kind of see the pattern. Just line up your motherboard right on the board, do some measurements really quick, and you can just draw a circle where you need to actually drill the hole. Real simple, doesn't have to be hyper accurate because there's a little bit of a gap, and the blind nuts give you a little bit of playroom as well. You can see from that video that there's a a liquid cooler on the back side of this thing. So what I've done is I've cut out a hole that all the airflow can go through because you really can't just Velcro that thing on. So we bolted onto the back side, cut a hole for all the air to go through. And the bonus is, is that all the airflow from the radiator now goes to the back of the motherboard and I get some extra cooling benefit because why not? It's not gonna hurt anything. It's a little bit warm, but it's not, not gonna be any warmer than what you have in a normal case anyway. So if you have airflow across the back of the motherboard, why not? Just easy, it looks decent, and you might get some random benefit out of it. Who cares though? So you notice though that they're on the radiator. The hoses are coming out the bottom of the radiator and going up to the actual CPU. 
There's a little bit of a benefit with this is that as evaporation happens inside of the liquid cooler, you get a little more life out of it because the liquid is always going to the bottom because of gravity. And you get a little bit more life out of the whole system. Get a little more bang for your buck over the years. So the last big part for this actual build is the power supply. It's heavy enough and big enough, probably gets warm as well, that maybe just Velcroing it onto the board probably isn't the best idea. It might pop off while you're working and then you have a big power supply bouncing around while you're training as a computer. Probably not the best idea. So what I did is I went ahead and cut a hole into the actual um, plywood piece that I had. It was that was a nice tight fit. It would actually was tight enough that I could just slide it in there and actually not have to attach it any other way. But just in case we didn't push through by accident, I went ahead and put some aluminum panel on the back side of it, some scrap aluminum I had laying around, and I Velcroed that onto the power supply so it can't fall outward. The one problem is at that point, it can fall inward into the motherboard. Now you have aluminum hitting the back of all the little contact points of the motherboard. Probably not the best idea, idea either. What I did is I used some double stick tape, like heavy duty stuff from the hardware store. It worked okay, but while pulling the thing apart, um, it started coming away and it became a bit of a pain. So probably the best idea would be to just drill a hole through the aluminum, use a wood screw, attach it permanently, never have to worry about it again and then the Velcro will hold the power supply in place. You'll also see that there's a slot across the bottom for all the cords to run through. And there's also a slot on the side where the, uh, the PCI Express cable will go through. This is easier to cut it out that way because something that narrow with the tools I had, like a coping saw, it was just easier to cut it out from the power supply uh, slot. Anyway, it's close, nice tight look to it. It works out pretty nice in the end. So at the end, you have basically this big wood piece. All I did is attach a little piece of plywood to the bottom, a couple pieces on the back in order to make the little straps to make sure it stayed 90 degrees and didn't fall apart um, from the weight. It keeps it nice and strong. It's just a little bit of wood glue is all it takes. No screws are really necessary at this point. Just a nice tight fit with the glue. Let it dry overnight, you're good. So after that, you can just uh, spray paint it with whatever you have, do a little clear coat. I use a matte finish because I'm not really big on gloss and it comes out reasonably well. The wood grain comes through so you can see it's plywood. Everybody goes, wow, that looks like plywood and you made it yourself. So you get a little extra uh, geek factor on that one as well. This is really simple, spare parts. Uh, you might have laying around. You might have to buy a few things from the hardware store like the screws, the blind nuts, maybe a coping saw. You probably have a drill laying around. So you're probably good there as well. Overall, you can probably make this whole thing if you have the wood already for like 50 bucks at the most, which is cheaper than most computer cases. And you get something unique to the build that you have and it's reusable, a little more packed and small. And with everything going to smaller and smaller uh, hard drives, if, if you have one at all like this one, it becomes very easy to do. You can reuse it. And it's just something to be proud of because it's something a little different than everybody else has. So hopefully you can see that just having some scrap plywood laying around, so a basic saw to cut a hole and some drills, that's all you really need in order to make a case. A ruler to measure things out, kind of lay things out with a general idea, that's all you have to have. I could give you a schematic for this one, but there's no real point because your design is probably gonna be different. You can probably make it smaller than what I did, or your situation is a little reshaped. Also with PCI Express 4, you're gonna have a little shorter cable if you have any at all, because it needs shielding on the cable in order to work properly. So you have to redesign it anyway. So maybe you have a panel on one side with a motherboard tray and you attach it there. You have another panel in front of it, you cut all the holes for like the cooling system. And you can have like the cooler blow right onto the motherboard top instead of the bottom. And you can cool your VRMs as well. Lots of different ideas you can do. So hopefully this gives you some ideas what you can do for your own case. Use some basic parts you have laying around. Let me know if, what you come up with uh, down below. And if you have any questions, let me know and I'll see what I can do to help you out along the way.